Hello everyone, I am back. And to get you caught up with where we are at this state. Let's see, we spent the last couple of days making the carbon fiber, we'll call it a splash. It's um, what they call it, a moldless carbon fiber method. So what we did was we took the C2 front end, uh, sprayed it with PVA, and then put the carbon fiber on top of that. This is only two layers of carbon fiber. There is still at least one more. I think that's going to be sufficient. So this is not the finished. So in other words, we have a place here where we spliced it in. I'll uh, sand that smooth before I put the extra layer on. And then this area right here where the vents are, uh, we're changing the vent. Actually, we did the vent separate because we wanted, because it was too hard to get all of that curve and uh, shape in there. So we decided to do it separate. Uh, the other thing that I did was I made the fender flares. Now these are rough also, uh, only two layers. And the reason why is I had to piece together a bunch of parts to make this and it has screws holding it down and that sticks out. And I was afraid if I took the screws out that it would mess that up. So I am going to pull this off, fix it, make it look good before we put the next layer on top of it. Speaking of which, the reason why I have to do all of that is the difference between the C6 and the C2. So if you look at the C2, there's very little space in between the very front of the car and the opening of the wheel well. If you come over here and look, there is a foot, I guess, extra, nine inches extra, something like that. So I had to fill in that space in between. What I did was I put a piece of foam board on, and then we went ahead and put aluminum tape to keep this from sticking. And we did not put any wax or mold release or anything on it. So it might be a little bit difficult to get off, but worst case, I can use some mineral spirits or whatever and get the tape to let loose. So that isn't really significant. So we've got the fender flare here. That's again, a little rough. It'll get smoothed out. The advantage is we were really careful when we made, oh, we kind of messed that up. When we made the fender flares, uh, the hard part is getting this inner lip. So we did that. The reason why that's so hard is it can cause the part to be mold bound. So we went ahead and made sure that was good. What happened is when we removed it from the mold, it was a little bit mold bound. I knew that going in because I decided to go around the nose here. I sh probably should not have done that. I should have stopped right here. But by going around now, I've got some extra material I can work with. There are a few little bumps and stuff. Like I said, I'm going to sand this one smooth as well before we put the third, I think final layer on it. I don't know about final, we will see. One of the things is this front end is unbelievably light. I mean, it weighs, I don't know, maybe 10, five pounds, something like that. I meant to bring this uh, suitcase scale and I forgot it. So I'll weigh it when I get a chance. But again, it's going to increase by 50% because we're putting another layer on it. And then we'll add the fender flare. So actually it's more accurate to get it with all of that put together and fixed. That's my goal for today. In addition to, I lost my helpers today, so I'm by myself. Come up here. That vent section I was talking about, here it is. So what we're going to do is cut out that uh, fender at the opening right here where this is. And then we're going to, we purposely left an extra inch or so on the outside that's going to get trimmed away. And then we'll use bond, the compound uh, panel bond, and bond this in from the back side after we accurately cut the opening. We did have a little bit of pooling, actually a lot of pooling right there. So I've got to decide whether I want to mess with fixing that. I think I will. Uh, got to sand that smooth. 
same thing here. So we should have set this thing level before we left, but we put it on there and then left and then the next morning came in and it had pulled there. Here's the door panels. Here's one of them. These have not been touched since they've been made. We wanted to give it plenty of time for the epoxy to cure before we started sanding. Now is that time, so that's going to be on the agenda soon to go off and sand this smooth. It will probably get yet another layer of epoxy after it's sanded smooth. It's kind of silly to, to sand it uh, relatively smooth and leave, I'm sorry, it's kind of silly to add another layer when there are obvious issues with this layer. So what we're going to do is sand this smooth, then put another layer of epoxy. And the only reason I'm putting the other layer of epoxy is there's still some areas where you can see the uh, pattern of the carbon fiber, which means that that's pretty thin right there. So I may change my mind and put another layer of epoxy on, but it's really hard to get the epoxy to hang on to those edges like that. And then here's the other one, same thing. It's smooth where we had it sitting flat, but then the areas that were, by having that flat, this area was not flat, and it ended up with a textured surface to it. Uh, if you look at, I think it's uh, composite, I forget, composite environments or composite something. They have a, you can Google it, mo, what is it? Moldless carbon fiber method where they make a car carrier and they use the, they use foam and then make a part out of it without using uh, a mold. Now, what we're going to do is after we get through with all of this, all of this is going to require modification. We're gonna make molds for this stuff. So right now, the goal is to simply get everything looking good enough and smooth enough and all that, that we will have final, quote, final parts for the prototype. And from that, either we'll directly make molds from these parts, or I've got a 3D scanner and we can 3D scan it. And then uh, I have a five axis mill that is supposed to be <laughs> operational, hopefully within the next month. Um, right now, it is a huge uh, shelf. So we'll see. I'm trying to think of anything else. Oh, and so some people have been talking about doing vacuum bagging and infusion. Well, and they said, oh, the stuff isn't that expensive. Well, I looked on Amazon and it is almost $1,500 for the stuff to do uh, vacuum. I'm sorry, I just can't see spending $1,500 right now. Um, I think we can get that stuff done without spending that money. The advantage I have is the people that help me, I hire them, I pay them, you know, decent but not great. And so, you know, at their rate, I could have them spend an entire day sanding stuff and still come out <laughs> a lot cheaper than uh, buying all that vacuum stuff. Plus, then I have the consumables and the hassle and all of that stuff. All right, there's still a lot to do. I'm still debating how much more of this car to make out of carbon fiber. Already made the decision to make the front end out of carbon fiber, including that lower spoiler. The doors are already carbon fiber. So the next two options are this rear section right here. And I do have the mold for this, so we could do this the other way, put it inside of a mold and do it or we can skin it like we did that and do it that way. Same thing with the uh, split window. It's back there behind that piece of foam. It's going to replace this hatch. I still haven't figured out how that works. Um, I, I'm sure it just skins over this somehow. I'm sorry, I take off this. I already tried putting it on here and both uh, the original hatch and the glass have to be removed. For that to go on there it won't fit over the glass so i've got to figure out what to do about that and then i also need to figure out what glass does it take and i don't know if it fits original glass or if it's whatever i've got to figure that out i'm trying to think what else to do or what else to say and that's it oh 
One of the advantages of redoing the back end that we've got is this one is for a C2 Corvette replica. To do the Grand Sport, the Grand Sport does not have a back bumper. So if we want this to be more like a back, sorry, like a Grand Sport, then this back bumper has to go, which would mean cutting it off and splicing in a flat piece. Or if we make it from scratch, it would be relatively easy inside the mold to just use some of that uh, aluminum tape across it so that there is not this indention from the inside, uh, extrusion from the outside to uh, make the bumpers. The rest of it, I think, is pretty much the same between the two. I'll have to look at the Grand Sport to see for sure. So, kind of would get two uh, birds with one stone by doing this back into the mold and using carbon fiber inside the mold. But then again, that kind of argues for using the vacuum. Definitely not vacuum infusion because that's a huge step, but vacuum at least. Um, anyway. I'll have to decide. Might do vacuum infusion. Who knows? But I did look up the kit on Amazon, and it's fifteen hundred bucks. That's just a lot of money to spend right now on something that you know. Yeah, it'll be better, but is it really fifteen hundred dollars better? I don't know. Maybe on the next one. Maybe after we make the molds off of this, then the next one we'll go ahead and step up to using vacuum infusion. That brings up the thing about the strength and how much does vacuum help. Uh, there are several tests that I've looked at and people have sent me links to. And the bottom line is by using just vacuum bagging, it provides about a 4% strength increase over doing what we're doing now. I don't really think it's worth all that money for a 4% strength increase. Now, if you go to vacuum infusion, it gives about a 33% or a third increase in strength. So that might be worth the money, but still 1500 bucks for, I'm trying to do this shade tree, as you know, and for most people, $1,500 is a lot of money. The funny thing is in the carbon fiber group, they said, oh, just go ahead and go to vacuum infusion. The stuff isn't that expensive. I don't know about the rest of you, but $1,500 to me isn't cheap. There's a lot of things I could buy for $1,500 instead of all of the stuff to do vacuum infusion. Okay, that's all I've got for now. Oh, and the other problem is this, all these parts are so big. Most of the people that use vacuum infusion do smaller parts. These are not small parts by any stretch of the imagination, especially that one piece back in. That's a pretty big thing and it would be difficult, we'll say, to vacuum bag that or vacuum infusion. It could be done but it is a rather big part. Okay, I think that's it. So, go ahead, like, subscribe, hit the alert, uh, hit the thanks if you wanna donate, and if you don't like what we're doing, you don't know Jack, bye.